aloha. How you doing? This is Andrew, the security guy, not Gordo the tech czar, here on Hibachi Talk. Uh, <laughs> glad to have you back this week. Uh, we got some really interesting stuff for you today. I'm sorry Gordo's not here to host. He's off chasing his grandson and UH. You know, they're on, I think, their last away game this, uh, this week. So, and he's traveled with every away game they've had, which has been amazing. Um, with us today, I do have a new co-host for you, the professor in direct from uh, Capil Capilani Community College, Dave Stevens, and we're going to give you that nickname because you've professor. agreed to co-host once in a while, <laughs> so we're just going to call you the professor. I'm excited to be here. And our, Thank you. And our guest today is Rochelle uh, Mal Malengsungen. Yeah, did I get it? Close. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she's, uh, she's the ICT president at uh, Capilani Community College. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about ICT, but first, we'd like to know a little bit about you. Like, where did you grow up? Uh, how did you end up where you are today? So maybe take us through some of that. Okay. Um, I grew up in Honolulu, Hawaii. I was born and raised here. I actually have a nutrition degree, okay. a sociology degree, so I worked as a, as a nutritionist. And where did you go to school? UH. And, no, before. High school, Sacred Hearts Academy. Oh, Sacred Hearts. Okay. Yeah. Right on. All girls school. <laughs> um, and then I went on to UH Manoa, and I worked in a hospital for over 10 years. Wow, okay. Time. In nutrition? Yes. Or, okay. Did you work with, um, who, who, what professors at Manoa did you have? I have a friend I cycled with that's a nutrition PhD there, but I can't think of Alan Ticino? No, it's, um, what's her name? Maria, um, I can't think of her last name offhand, sorry. Oh, well. <laughs> no, not ringing a bell. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> so, so uh, a background in nutrition and healthcare. So, yes. who, what kind of what did you work with? Like geriatric or who, who, who were you feeding? Someone. Um, <laughs> the staff. Yeah. Well, yeah, the, the hospital staff. I worked. The hospital I worked at is primarily geriatric. Okay. But then I had a few like one floor I took care of was uh, orthopedic, and then there was cardiology as well. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. How was that? Well, she's with ICT now, yes. so, oh, it was, yeah. so it, it was rewarding in many ways. But I kind of wanted to do something else. Ah, to, so it took a different career path, yes. right? On, yes. good for you, and not an easy career path at that. Yes. She actually know? represents a, a large portion of our student population. Okay, uh, that, that returning are, students, yeah, uh, second changing career? careers, ch second and third careers. Awesome. Yeah. A lot of them coming off of disability or retirement from the military, or. Uh, laid off from a big change like Aloha Airlines when, mm -hmm. it, when it changed to nice. just cargo, right? So a lot of those students are with us now. Actually, and we need there's such a shortage, you know? So did you, did you know there was a, such a workforce shortage or did you just want something with a different type of challenge? Well, initially when I went to KCC, I was gonna do radiology tech. Oh. But I had to take a lot of classes that I already took over again to be more competitive. I was like, there's no way. There's so many sciences that I had to take. So I was like, I really like computers, and when I used to work at the hospital, the IT guys would come in our office, and I'll be helping them. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. That, that, wow. Okay, good. <laughs> they helped us there. So you had an aptitude. Yeah. Right? Yes. A little pre-training. <laughs> pre-training. <laughs> kept them straight. Right. right. All right. Well, let's. We do a little segment called uh, "You Know Got One Tech Job," and I don't know if we could have straightened these guys out, but let's have a quick look at some people who shouldn't have had a job. Now, <laughs> see, you had one job. Now, see these buttons? This is probably on a remote control. But that's, that's not left, is that? I mean, isn't that confusing when you read left, but the arrow points right? But I'm dyslexic, so that's perfect. That, so, but do you ever get where you're going? Like, <laughs> I mean, that's... Eventually, if you keep turning right, you're going to make a left. Ah, you get there, <laughs> round it out. Okay, so... So maybe, you know, some of those guys that you were helping, they, maybe they should have been doing something else. You're right. Yeah, you yeah. never know about these tech jobs. <laughs> right. um, so let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about ICT, which is the Information, Communication, and Technology Club. And I know there's one at KCC. I know there's a group at Honolulu that have a different name, I think, and then a group at Manoa that have a different right. name. We've had uh, ITMSA on here from Manoa, I think Shiloh School of Business. So tell us a little bit about the club that you have there. So um, our club is pretty new. Uh, Dave actually asked any of us if he wanted to start a club, and okay. no one really jumped to it. Ah. So I emailed him and said, you know, I'm interested, because I, I was um, president for other clubs before for school, uh -huh. and for my son, I'm PTG, <laughs> Parent Teachers Guild. So okay. I, have, I have background. You have leadership yes, skills. Have leadership she has leadership skills, skills that's what she's saying, <laughs> yes. if you're not reading between the lines out loud. <laughs> <laughs> so I took that opportunity, and um, I actually, are at KCC, um, there's a ball over 20 registered independent organizations on campus. Wow. And so the ICT club officially became 
a registered independent organization in September. So we're still oh. fairly new, but we're still trying to get more members, and okay. hopefully it grows. And how do you go about recruiting? Like, what do you recruiting. do? You hand out flyers? Do you knock on doors? Do you <laughs> Beat them over the head. You dra yeah. <laughs> drag them in. Well, we know. announced it in class, but actually just this past Tuesday, we had an REO day club um, on campus. So okay. we had, because it's open to, the membership is open to everyone at KCC. Sure. And also those that are at UH West Oahu that are taking at least one course in one course at KCC, like IT. Oh, so some of them had to yeah. cross over just because of their schedules or the right. course offerings some of them not available. Some midstream <laughs> transferring in, articulating to UH West, so they're doing a, a couple of classes at KCC right. and doing a lot of classes over at UH West okay. at the same time. I see. Awesome. And so you open that up to them. And do you, right. do you have, are you pulling members from there as well? Is that working out? There, are, there actually are members. There. Awesome. So how do you, do you get help? Do you have to run it on? You know how when you get these volunteer organizations <laughs> well, and like no one helps you? You're, you're on your the, own. You're yeah. the one who's running it. Like, well, do you have to do everything? I didn't know I was going to be president. He told me. So I was like, okay. So then she I was, was voluntold. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that happens. So <laughs> then my house. I don't know. I volunteered people to be pre uh, vice president <laughs> okay. and treasurer Good. and Good secretary. <laughs> Delega delegation is important. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And so what, what's the, the mission of the club? What's, um, you know, what, so, you know, what's your vision for? Right. for well, our calling? mission for the club is just to promote the IT field in the community and also around campus. Where we were trying to teach more, like, do like more community service, kind of, like Dave was saying, um, go to like retirement homes and teach mm -hmm. about like cybersecurity. Like sure. how se seniors get scammed a lot. Big time. So, we're trying to do that as well. That's excellent. Yeah. Some of the, the most egregious victimization right. of, of people through social yeah. engineers through our senior community. Yeah. We want to get out there and, and teach them how to avoid that. Yeah, I know. They're, uh, they're predated, right? They're, uh, they're, unfortunately. A tar they're a targeted audience right. for right. sure. So yeah. it's, uh, that's important that you do that work for the community. So what about on campus? I'm kind of interested. Is there a, uh, is it a competitive, right, trying to recruit people into the, to the ICT field? With like you yourself went back for radiology but ended up getting an ICT. What, uh, what do you find? Um, you know, are, 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 are many people just, are they younger, are they older? Like we talked about these, some multi-career path. Mm -hmm. um, what, what, do you, what do you see there on campus? Like what's on the campus? impact of ICT? The population is young and I have a mixture of older, like, is that, I don't know if that. Yeah, so multi-career, so people, right. you said some would come back for maybe second or third right. career. Right, and then we have is a lot a, of, a lot of, that, or? A lot of students from UH who got their degree, their, their undergrad in something else, and yeah. didn't enjoy the career field or couldn't really pursue a career field as, as far as they wanted to go in wow. it. Wow. So they're changing, and we, we have, uh, you know, a few people that got a, a, a bachelor's in business, and they're now in cybersecurity. Right. And uh, in fact, one of them just uh, interviewed and is now an official DOD cybersecurity contractor. <laughs> While he's still okay. taking my class, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> These, they, the kids get hired right out of class. Yeah. So he's he's an he's an average student, uh, you know, mid range student, uh, average age of about twenty six to twenty eight years old. Oh. Yeah, so we don't we don't have. So these aren't like teenagers that. necessarily. No. You've got a, a I would say to me a little bit slightly older population slightly of students older. than more mature, you know, right out of high school basically. Very motivated. Sure. So the money's good. Right. Well, when they see that, they're tremendously motivated. Yeah. <laughs> But they're, they're motivated just to change their lives and do something they really want to be interested in for the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. So most people get into a career and they think, oh my gosh, I'm stuck here. <laughs> but yeah. these are people like, you know, they're motivated to change, make that change. Mm -hmm. And uh, we support that. And I think ICT, so, but you have, you have other disciplines, not just cybersecurity, right? You obviously, you probably have database Sure, we do the broad spectrum, everything from media arts uh, on down to gaming and databases and programming and uh, okay. networking and network security, and we do cyber. And is, is, is the ICT club open to all those disciplines as well? Like you're, yes. Okay, good. Awesome. So, let me see. So, what are you pulling into the club? That same mixture, or is it more, more older, res, you know, responsible, or what, what, are you trying, what are you getting in your club? What's your... What's your <laughs> Yeah. Who, who, are, who are you beating over the head hardest? Like, yeah. A mixture. <laughs> it's a mixture. The, the original intent of the club, really, I, I wanted to get them all to an industry standard conference for Black Hat and DEF CON right. next year. And uh, I, I was informed by, you know, upper management at the university that I should start uh, an ICD club on campus and promote that and do fundraisers for that club so that club can go to the conference. So that's what we've done. We're trying to do okay. fundraisers there. That evolved rapidly so what we're doing now is we were talking about this last week um, I put out a feeler to all our IT advisory folks uh, and I said look 
you all have companies. Can we do some mock back, black box spear phishing campaigns against your companies? And you give us a donation if we get anyone to click on our links and enter some personal information. And we got a very positive response. We got about 15% response. Awesome. So we're actually in our first cycle right now. We oh. have our first customer. Are you and are you on the team? Yes, I am. Oh, what, what's your favorite? Are you a technical fisher or a, a, you're well, social engineering? Pick up the phone, call them. <laughs> no, I'm the research organizer. Ah, well, so make sure everyone. Right yeah. Sure. They're just footprinting the <laughs> yes. organization. Yeah, trying find, to find out who, yeah, who, who, who's the guy to, to send the email <laughs> from. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you go through the social media sites, and then you maybe you do uh, you find out what their website is doing. Yes. A couple banner grabs, you know, tell that to that site and see mm -hmm. if you can pull back some information. Are they running? Microsoft IAS, or they're running Apache, and then, you know, what are the exploits? You know, how can I get around this? How can mm -hmm. I send an email without them knowing, or knowing it's from me and outside their organization? It's sure. So, right now we're in the research phase. Oh. Yeah, we've got 30 days to get this done. And oh, then we have so to evil. report. Yeah. <laughs> Is it? I don't know. Yeah, I told him just, just get your evilness going. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is, um, it, how many people, is it teams? How, 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 are, they, how are you organized yeah. for that, that particular effort? Because that's, that's a donation, not a classroom effort, or is it some of both? No, no, it's outside the classroom. Okay. So this is, this is a extra time that they're putting in on the careers, and I'm really excited about that because they get the hands-on experience sure. of actually doing this. So when they go into a company, they're not saying, oh, I did all this theoretical and lab stuff in school, yeah. but now I'm ready for my on-the-job training. No, they're ready to hit the ground running, mm -hmm. and they've got this real-life test they got going on. Hopefully it'll evolve from this to maybe security audits, mm -hmm. where they go in the organization, you know, what are your network ports, how often do you change your passwords and stuff like that. So, yeah. I'm really excited. Um, you know, I just uh, had to pen a little paper about the new NIST guidance for small business. I don't know if you saw that document. Uh, I haven't seen it. It's, no. it's, it just came out a few days ago, but it is, um, it, you know, the small business is really struggling. Hawaii has a ton of them, right? Mm -hmm. And they really struggle with just just even invent auditing their type of information that they have, right? Mm -hmm. And the, the minor assessments, there's some minor assessment tools, but I was thinking that your group could take something like this, because many are in the supply chain to DOD, which right. these are going to be requirements from their acquisition. Easiest their way in is from a small vendor. Yeah, yeah right. and, and the, these, these controls that they need to implement based on, this is based on unclassified information being considered a, a moderate risk to well, the Well, enough unclassed information that's sensitive can be compiled into sensitive and terminal information exactly. to execute an attack. Yeah. And so this, um, I, I thought we'd, uh, not, maybe not today, but this is something I think that you could take that and, and help, help consult to small businesses how to get implemented, how to get started, because many of them aren't aware. They're going to start losing their contracts if they can't fulfill these requirements. Oh, simple and, stuff, too. And they just don't know You put know in a wireless router, there. you leave the default settings for username and yeah. password, things like that. Um, it's really easy to break into some of these places. So you, sure. It's just, a, just a punch list. Yeah, and it's an, it's an absolute yeah. vulnerability that's out there. So we're going to take a break for about a minute. We'll be back with Rochelle and Dave. We're going to pay a few bills, and we'll see you right after. Thank you, Hawaii. Asia in the view. I am Johnson Choi, the host. I'm looking forward to see you next month, December 15, Thursday, 11 o'clock, right here again. Aloha, everyone. I'm Maria Mera, and I'm here to invite you to my bilingual show, Viva Hawaii on FinTech Hawaii, every other Monday at 3 p.m. We are here to talk about news, issues, and events, local and around the world. Join me. Aloha. I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science here on FinTech Hawaii. Every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m., you'll have a chance to come and listen and learn from scientists around the world. Scientists who talk about their work in meaningful, easy to understand ways. And you'll come to appreciate science as a wonderful way of thinking, way of knowing about the world. You'll learn interesting facts, interesting ideas. You'll be stimulated to think more. Please come join us every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m. here on Think Tech Hawaii for a likable science with me, your host, Ethan Allen. Hey, aloha, and welcome back to Bachi Talk. I'm here with Dave and Rochelle, and I've got a security minute for you. Um, came across a nice article uh, about two-factor authentication. And, uh, you know, this is something that, something that you have, something that you know, something that you are. Um, and using any two of those three to help authenticate yourself or, or help prove that you are who you're supposed to be to a system like a bank, for example, you know, uh, you show up and use, you have a card with you and then you know the PIN code, right? So that's an example of two-factor authentication. But there's a lot of other services out there that you may not know about 
that use uh, things like Google Authenticator, which is an a, a app you can download that runs a constantly changing number, and you can use that along with your password to log into certain sites. Uh, Microsoft has one. Um, you can go look at uh, the, uh, the stuff I'm quoting is from uh, Surveillance Self Defense, just a, a site. And I thought, you know, we, have, we talk about some of these things, but we really don't, don't tell you where to get the information. So, um, you know, if, you, if you're visiting places and you need greater uh, or you want better account security, um, I would advise you to try these types of things. It keeps someone from sort of hijacking just your password, learning it, and then getting into your site and emulating you or changing it and locking you out of your site, things like that. Um, there's a couple of problems that you should know about with uh, two-factor. Of course, if you lose one of your factors, you, you may be locked out of that account until you can get your factor back. Like if you're relying on your phone or uh, like a mobile authenticator on your phone and you don't have your phone with you, obviously you may not be able to get access to that data. Uh, most of these sites do allow you to have a, a one-time code of some type that can get you in no matter what. But remember, if you're keeping that, you've kind of defeated the purpose. So don't, if you have something like that, keep it very secure. Um, you can definitely go to twofactorauth.org uh, for more information, which just flashed up there. The other thing I want to talk about was a lot of these, we use SMS uh, messaging, right, to send you a, a message for a one-time code. And SMS goes in the clear, so that, that code is going out and it's capturable by people who are sitting with me today who like to capture this kind of stuff. <laughs> so anyway, um, but anyway, it's, it's still better to have a single-factor authentication. So if you don't know about 2FA, go to 2FA.twofactorauth.org. Uh, get some more information and see if you can keep yourself a little better protected. All right, that's it for my security minute for today. Back to our guest Rochelle from the ICT program at KCC, the president and the professors here with us today again, Dave Stevens. So let's talk about how we marry up these services. So you know you're putting together a, a penetration testing mm -hmm. um, capability that you're going to offer out to the community to try to, it would be much cheaper than a professional pen test, but it lets an organization find out where they're at and their vulnerabilities, and then they can make a donation to the club that helps get the students off to places like DEF CON or Black Hat. So great opportunity for the community. Um, awesome coming out of KCC, but how do we get the rest of the campuses engaged? Because to me, I think we need 100 of these teams running around. We have like 70,000 small businesses in Hawaii that can take advantage of this. I agree with you, and what we're going to do is we're going to take this to the next level and offer this system-wide. So what we're doing right now is, is creating a nonprofit organization separate from the university that will hire out just these uh, interns from the University of Hawaii cyber system. So we have 11 physical campuses in the university system right now, two on the Big Island, uh, three on the Big Island, and we want to bring all of them together to do these kind of services for their local communities. So once we get that going, once the students graduate, we'd also like to give them employment in the organization while they wait for their first gig. Oh. And if we're making enough donations, we can actually give them a living stipend. So that is their first paying job in cybersecurity. So wow. they don't have to go out into the community having no actual job experience. Sure. Right. And they can help Rochelle manage the committee, which is Hopefully, by that point. Right? Are you, now, <laughs> you got voluntold for the KCC. When do you, are, you, are you interested in driving, helping drive this to Actually, across the state? You know, I mean, that's, a, that's an awesome idea. Yeah. We're really excited about it. Very know, excited. Imagine she gets to be president of this organization for several years, and then she goes to another organization. She's already been president of a cybersecurity company. Sure. I mean, that's Basically, yeah, that's what it is. Right. So getting that next job is going to be that much easier. Yeah, and there, I mean, there's no shortage of jobs. You're gonna, you'll get sapped up quickly here in Hawaii. Is um, what what? So you start with social engineering. So when we talk about a penetration test for social engineering, right? We're really talking about manipulating someone's internal email, get, getting someone inside of a company to click on a bad link or something like that. Right. Um, are there other types of services that you guys are, folks are looking to roll out? Um, well, the security audits are next plan. Okay. You know, some kind of a security audit. We walk into an organization. How do you, how do you do your business day to day? Okay. And what are the potential threats that could come out of that? What are your vulnerabilities? Mm -hmm. And what are the access points to your organization? And we'll go through, you know, basic punch lists. We'll send students out to evaluate that. That, that organization and say, based on this, we recommend these seven steps to mm -hmm. get you to a basic security level that'll take, uh, you know, the, the script kitties off the, off the table. You know, okay. People just running, you know, scripts against your, your sure. organization. Random attacks. Uh, right, random attacks. I like what you brought up just a moment ago when you're talking about cell phones and sending in clear text. Mm -hmm. Most people don't realize that a cell phone is a radio. Yeah. It's sending messages every direction. Sure all the time, clear text, unless you p specifically encrypt it yep. with an end user. So it, it's, it's an important point to realize that you're just walking around with a radio and somebody's everybody else. So yeah. the right. old scanners that used to pick up the police bands, you can do the same with a cell phone. You just turn to the right frequency 
and you get all that information. So yeah, you send something over SMS, uh, it's basically in the it's, clear. It's in the clear unless you've encrypted it. So there, and I, I um, was talking with um, Bob Monroe, who was showing me a software-defined radio, mm. which this stuff used to be super expensive, 100 grand. Wow. He's built it on a Raspberry Pi, oh. tunable to whatever frequency <laughs> I want. This is a couple hundred bucks device, wow. right? With the antenna costing the most. The Pi yeah. is 40 bucks, and the, so the software is open source free software today. So, you know, very rapidly, the, the technology for sniffing signals has gone from six figures to something almost any person could afford. And this is scary. When you go to Black Hat and DEF CON like I did last year, you see kids walking around with backpacks on and antennas sticking up out. <laughs> yeah. And so they tell you, don't take your cell phone or turn it off. Oh, yeah, you got to have a burner. And yeah, and don't, um, don't take any credit cards. You know, the mag strip can be red, oh, and yeah. so, this, so can the radio frequency chip on your card, right? So a lot of these radio frequency chips used to transmit all the information about you, mm -hmm. but now they transmit a serial number. Mm -hmm. and that's it. Yeah. So you go, you transmit the serial number, and whatever reader you're attached to can equate that serial number to your personal information, but you don't carry the personal information around with you anymore. But sure. some of the old ones yeah. will still give it all up. Right. You walk up, and they scan you from about this distance in your back pocket, and you hear a beep, that's it, you're done. They've yep. got all your information. So they, 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 you're supposed to get an RFID blocking wallet mm -hmm. when you go to these things <laughs> and use cash. Don't swipe your card. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a scary place to be, but you get to meet the, the worst of the best of the worst. Yeah, and we, had, we uh, have a, a friend who set up a, just a, a, a rogue uh, access point in his, um, in his suitcase. He was dragging around a major trade show in <laughs> Vegas, right? So, um, and using, I uh, forget the, the tool that knocks you, it basically knocks people off of the, the local access point and emulates it and then attaches it to him. Oh, yeah. And in four hours, before lunch, he had 36,000 logons and passwords oh from gosh. people that were using the public Wi Fi at oh that show. Oh, my God. 36,000. Wow. Now, this was a big show, but, but it was that easy just, wow. just to roam around. So, I mean, I, I don't use public Wi Fi, things like that. It's scary. You can do that with cell phones, too. Yeah, exactly. You, exactly. If you're talking on your cell phone, you can be bumped off that channel and get on, get on someone's roving yeah. unit. And, and that's more the more the, F, I think, the FBI and local law enforcement. I know there's those, those radio kits that they're using. You know, so you're driving through a town. You think you're on a, a real cellular network, but you're actually on their cellular network. Right. You and, know. and they're passing you through. You know, yeah. They're, 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 they're not interested they're in you, but they're interested in certain people. So. Right. right. So. <laughs> Interesting information is um and so is that are you specializing in in cyber or like offensive defensive or have you decided yet where you're where you're headed? My career. Yeah. More security. Yes. So, but defensive. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. The so we have to do both in the in the major, right? Yeah. We did a oh, network security okay. class first, and then we went into offensive and security. So we do the defense. How do you defend your network? Mm -hmm. And then we do offense. How do you get around all those sure. defenses? And uh, it's been a real. And what do you think? How, what have you? So, do you think anyone can really be secured? Like, no. Technically, <laughs> I love it. Well, I, I didn't even it, finish yeah. my. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love that. You, you I'm, I'm right there doing with the you. research. Oh my gosh, I'm like so paranoid. <laughs> sure. And it goes. It goes back to realistically all this stuff. Although it's electrical, it's mechanical, right? right. And anything that can be built can be unbuilt. That's so right. That's and she witnessed it in her classroom. Yes. I actually challenged the I students in my classroom to hack me, and all. they did it. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> they've actually hacked me. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Social <laughs> and, and physical and with you, the DNS yeah. art poisoning In attack. one class or in over? Just one, one class. class. I only have one side. Oh, nice. Class. Yeah. So the, all 23 <laughs> students got together and they did a social engineering attack on me. And, uh, in one, in like one hour, in one, in one. No, no, no. Like I mean, over the course of Over the, the course yeah. of Okay. Was I was going to say, because that's pretty creative. <laughs> if they, yeah, no, they, they, they really, one yeah. guy said he never slept for five weeks. <laughs> Broke up with his girlfriend. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we really got into it. Yeah, but they did it, and I'm really proud. Yeah, yeah. and feeling a little squeamish and vulnerable at the same time. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and so I think, and I've never, I've, I've, I know a lot of groups that do pen testing. They never fail. Actually, you know, they they don't actually ever stop. I've never heard of anyone saying, "Yeah, ours, we couldn't get in." It's just a matter of time. It's a matter of time, yeah. and a matter of resources, and a matter of effort. So you know. That shouldn't scare people. People should still defend themselves. You, you want to be difficult to attack, right? I mean, if you, the harder you make it, the, the hopefully someone who's, you know, really interested in getting in will either not be smart enough or run out of time or run out of resources, right? Because it's... Get bored and move on. Sometimes it's a paid effort. That's what you really hope that they just have had enough, right? Yeah, so, yeah. But if someone's paying someone to get to you, you know, the, you know like the dark, in, in yeah. dark, dark leaks, right, where you can go on yeah. and advertise what you, who you want and what you'll pay for it, and someone takes that on, and, you know, if it's too hard, you hopefully they'll quit, because the fact is, right. as you said, <laughs> if they want in, they're going to get in. Yes. Yeah, and just look at the, uh, I guess uh, we're blaming Russia now for the Democratic National... DNC. The DNC sure. hack, yeah. 
So if they, they want in, they'll get in, and it doesn't matter where they are on the planet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nation states have a lot of resources, right? Yeah. So, I mean, of all the, the last person you want chasing you are those guys. <laughs> yeah. you're, you're, you're pretty much done. Yeah. You go on Norse, you, you show them Norse, like the Norse map of all the... the <laughs> all the, all the, the, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the ones that crack me up are the ones that are coming in from, like, central Italy. <laughs> Who's in Tuscany trying yeah. to hack me? <laughs> what are they doing? <laughs> yeah. They're just getting drunk and running a script. Some, uh, or some, or somebody, I think they're usually being redirected, right? So they, they've they've attacked somebody there they've got bots sitting there that are launching this stuff it just seems like a random place you know tuscany something along the amalfi coast yeah. uh, sicily you know what? sicily <laughs> yeah so, so give us a pitch about the club we got a minute or so left and uh what what uh, what, what can we do to to help promote your the club here tell us tell us why we should join you should join because i'm the president <laughs> <laughs> you should join because rochelle's president yeah, first of all you're going to get to know her just need to look good right um, well, if you want to, if you're really interested in um, computers and technology, I would definitely join our club. Um, we're, we have a lot of things that we're planning to do, and it's pretty interesting, especially in the cybersecurity areas. So that alone just excites me. <laughs> so awesome. I, so, uh, and they're doing real world stuff right yeah. now. Yeah. yeah. So if you want to learn about the real world, join the ICT club at KCC. Uh, join Rochelle, help her out. She's got a lot of work on. She could use some help over there. Um, I think that's going to wrap us up for the day. We normally have a, a, a solo cup to give you. This is episode 93 or 4, I'm not sure. I will make sure you get that autographed by Gordo, the professor in this case, and myself. And we'll get it delivered over to your office there at ICT, at right, KCC, okay. okay? Promise you that. Um, on the way out, we always just have a little thing we say on the count of three. One, two, three. How you, How doing? you doing? is going to get butt this season. In case you didn't understand me, University of Hawaii football team is going to kick butt under Rolovich this season. So be sure to follow us on Think Tech Hawaii and Hibachi Top. I'll be at every game. And remember, aloha!